Hey everybody, Mark D. Cropot here from lettersandbooks.com, Rusty Wheels Media, and Letters Never Meant to Be Read. I'm here with Priya Singh. Hi Priya, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Oh, just fine. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Dublin, Ireland right now, so it's pouring rain outside. What are you doing there? So I'm actually studying, I'm getting my master's in creative writing at uh, Trinity College. It's been kind of a dream. So yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying that. And it's my, my first semester, it's almost over, so yeah. So you're an aspiring world traveler. And right. where are you going back to? So at the, at the moment, uh, I'm actually going back to Germany and I'll be there for the rest of the year. Uh, and then I'll be back again in Dublin next fall to finish out my, my degree. I love it. It's been, for me, it's been really amazing because uh, I, I didn't go to school for my undergrad for writing. I studied film. And so for me, it was really great to have a lot of um, practical knowledge. Um, you, you miss a lot, I think when you're kind of doing it on your own. Not to say that you cannot do it on your own, but for me, it's just been really nice to get little things like tricks or even book recommendations or, you know, avenues that you can try to get your work published. And just the, the atmosphere too, it's great to be with other writers. That's awesome. And you also speak, you're a polyglot. What yes. languages do you speak? So. Technically aspiring polyglot, if we're, if we're splitting here. But, um, I am an English and Hindi speaker, so those are my mother tongues. Um, I lived in Korea, so I can read and write Korean. My speaking is so-so. Is um, I speak conversational German. Um, and my next goal is probably Russian. Originally from California, from the Bay Area. And uh, you wouldn't believe how many Bay Areaites I've met since I've gotten here. It's amazing. Apparently, we all like to travel too. So, so your letter and letters are meant, meant to be read, Volume Three, is Dear Fountain Hopper. How did you hear about the letter writing contest? Because you were one of the contest entries. That was yeah. our first ever. So you you can be you're a pioneer. Okay. <laughs> how did you hear about it? Uh, actually, I was just looking for places to submit my work, and so I did the whole Google trick. And, you know, <laughs> lucky you, yours was one of the first ones that came up, and I thought it was a really, it's just kind of a fun concept. So, yeah, I went for it, and I was not expecting anything, to be honest, but <laughs> and lo and behold, I got in. And let me ask you about the fountain hopper. Is that, a, did that really happen? Yeah, so I live in a city. Um, in Germany, I live in Dresden, and I don't know what it is about cities. I don't know if you have this experience too, but for some reason, people just love fountains, and especially in the summertime, people just kind of gravitate to the fountain. So there's one um, pretty close to where we live, and it actually, it says that you're not supposed to, to go in there because the water is, is recycled. So really anything that gets sucked up in there is just going to come back out. So cigarette butts, vomit, what Gross. have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you, you go by and there's people picnicking there and there's young children there. And it's, it's really strange. So it's kind of, it's not maybe one particular person. It's about two or three different people that are kind of squished into one. So, you know, the big reveal. Can you go ahead and read Dear Fountain Hopper for us? Sure. I, I don't really have much of a, a narrative voice, just to warn you, but... You, your voice is fine. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Fountain Hopper, I was walking by the fountain on Main Street yesterday at 14 o'clock when I saw you. That's two o'clock. You know the fountain. It's flat like a chessboard in the ground. You were as tall as a tree, smooth skin over muscled shoulders. You wore nothing but tatty striped shorts and a smile. On your head was the most glorious mop of golden curls ever to grace a man's head. As I walked by, struggling with two bags of vegetables, eggs, and rice, I saw you amongst the spurts of water climbing higher with each graceful spit. To be clear, the water was spitting, not you. You twirled around, hopping to a drum beat that was playing in your head. That beat must have been played by a one-handed drummer with vertigo. At first, I wanted to smile. There was pure joy in your face, even as your bare feet landed on old cigarette butts, soggy nuggets of burned tobacco sticking to your soles. 
However, I changed my mind as you began to whirl your own free-spirited worship to this urban temple we live in. As you spun top-like, wobbly and out of control, the water flicked in beads from the tips of your curls and created a rather impressive spray. What was equally impressive though, I must confess hideously unwelcome, were the number of drops which landed directly in my eyes and on my lips. Are you aware that the water used in the fountain is in fact recycled via the drain that borders it? Do you ever sit and watch the number of dogs, children, bicycles, and drunk people that weave their way through that fountain, usually leaving bits of themselves along the way? Bits that recycle back into those frothing wet spires. Well, I've sat back and watched them, and I can tell you that I didn't appreciate receiving those various leavings in my face. If you insist on continuing this bizarre ritual of urban worship, then I would like to suggest you shave your hair to spare me and others the free blessings which our golden curls bestow, as beautiful as those curls are. In closing, dear Fountain Hopper, I'm not telling you to stop doing what you love because it clearly makes you rapturous. I am merely saying that not everyone benefits from it, so think about who you're anointing next time, and if they've even asked for it. Don't let that get you down, though. I can assure you that your dancing is indeed infectious. With the loveliest greetings, someone who likes to write and just wanted groceries. Very good, very good. We have a whole bunch, a whole range of letters in here. Um, some are sad, some are unrequited love, some are angry, uh, some are revenge in words and things like that, and yours, is a little bit funny. We have funny ones too. Yours is a little bit funny, uh, a little bit sarcastic, um, but it doesn't fit any of those categories that I mentioned before. And so it's, it makes for a very unique letter, truly to a stranger who you may or may never see again, which is it's kind of cool. And you do have some level of affection for what he's doing right? Even though he's splashing you with dirty water. <laughs> Do you hate this person, this fountain hopper? Well, so like I said, it's, it's kind of a combination of, of three different people. So you, you kind of see the appeal, right? So you're in a city and there's not a whole lot of nature around, but yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, you, you just go 10 minutes and then you're in nature. So, so there's that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to dislike people when they're having a good time, even if, you know, they're, they're swimming around in <laughs> contaminated water. Let me ask you about, so you're going to school for creative writing. Obviously, you're forced to, in some, in some way, read and write a lot um, and do the writing workshops and things like that, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, how rigorous is the program that you're, that you're in? For me, it's... I mean, it's a good rigorous, I guess. So the amount of time that you spend in classes is smaller compared to all of the extra work that you're doing outside. And they do that in that they, they put that trust in you and expect you to keep working on your writing and to keep editing yourself and to keep working with other people so that the next time you do come back, you have something new to present to the table or you have uh, a way to, to show your progress. So we do read a lot, um, we do write a lot, and it's not necessarily they tell us that you have to have, you know, 26 pages done by the end of the month. It's, you kind of have to take it at your own pace. So we'll have uh, 15,000 words, and it can be a collection or it can be, you know, one piece. So I'm working on a novella and mm -hmm. that's going to be around 15,000 to 16,000 words. So that's probably what my portfolio would be. Do you have a title for the novella? Yeah, so my novella is called The Mourners. Uh, if it gets published, keep an eye out for it. <laughs> yeah. And, What's it about? Uh, it's about, so I'm, I write a lot within uh, diasporic fiction. So basically about uh, immigrant communities. So my, my family immigrated from Fiji, we're Fiji Indian. Um, and that in itself is just a really rich culture to write from. So the, the book is basically about taking the, the rituals around funerals and around death um, and turning it into a, a satire. So it's, it's kind of like what you said about the letter. It's a little bit sarcastic. It's a little bit funny. It's a little bit affectionate because that's, that's pretty much how I write. And that's kind of how I am as, as a human being. So. 
That's good. I mean, I, I, I really appreciate your style. I like dry humor anyway, and it has a quality of like telling it like it is because you don't necessarily pull any punches with your letter on the fountain hopper, but you do show affection, um, which can be taken any number of ways, right? So yeah, I, I look forward to, to reading more of your writing. How far along are you with the mourners? So I'm pretty much at the end, and I, I don't know if, I think a lot of people struggle with this, is that they get really close to the end and then they get that kind of fear and then you pull back and think, oh, I'm just gonna edit the beginning again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah, or, or, you know, the best of the worst, all of us. So yeah, it's it's almost at the end, but because I'm restructuring now, the, the ending has changed a bit. So now I have an excuse not to finish it yet. And do you know how it's going to end? I thought I did, and now I don't <laughs> know. It could it could be a lot of things. It could be really dramatic. You know, people could be poisoned, or, you know, somebody could just decide that they want to take up underwater photography. So it's got, there's a whole world of possibilities. So it's, <laughs> <it could end. laughs> That's funny. Um, do you think you'll write any more letters? Volume four is around the corner. I'm sure we're going to have another contest in January or February. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I really like it. It's actually, I think it's a great way of just getting kind of like short pieces out of you. And it's just a really unique medium. So I'll definitely be working on a couple of letters. So keep an eye out for that. I will. All right. Well, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you contributing to Letters Never Meant to Be Read, Volume 3. It's a beautiful book and uh, I'm so glad that you're a part of it. And I look forward to seeing your work in the future. Yeah, well, thanks you know, so much for making me a part of it. It's always really special to see your work in print. So, Okay, go ahead. Tell them. Tell them. All right. So, so one thing that I think is really important, if you, <laughs> if you ever need to know anything about me as a writer, then you should know that I am a cat person. Uh, I have a shameless love of cats that will never die. Um, I, I usually write with a cat next to me. I've got cats on my desk. I've got cats on my sweaters. I've got cat hair on all of my clothes. So, you know, if you, if you ever remember me for anything, when you pick up one of my books, just remember, Priya loves cats. <laughs> <laughs>